Good muggy morning, Evergreen. Um, our prelude today is not in the bulletin, but it is a music box request from a year ago, I think, um, from CK. And this is titled, What Do I Know by Sarah Groves. She's afraid of dying. I sit here years from her experience and try to bring her comfort. I try to bring her comfort. But what do I know? What do I know? She grew up singing about the Testify how Jesus changed her life. It was easy to have faith when she was 34, but now her friends are dying and death is at her door. And what do I know? What do I know? Well, I don't know that there.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to Evergreen as we uh, center our hearts and minds for worship. Hear these words of hope. Today is the day that our Creator has made. May we rejoice and be glad. And here's just a couple brief announcements for our life together. First of all, if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, if you're joining us in person or on Zoom, I'm Patrick. I'm the pastor here at Evergreen. And welcome to this uh, week three of Evergreen Roads Institute. We uh, welcome uh, our speaker today, Sophie Needle, Needleman Block, uh, who is here, and, and uh, you'll get a more formal introduction of her from Pastor Beatrix uh, in, a little, a little, in a little bit. Uh, there are Connect cards if you're new and you want to be uh, to stay in the know of what's going on at Evergreen. There's some Connect cards on the back table if you're uh, worshiping with us in person. If you're visiting on Zoom, a link to a digital Connect card will be dropped in the chat. And if you fill one out, we'll be in touch with you in the next few days. We're usually not open on Wednesdays, uh, at least for office hours, but I wanted to uh, uh, just add that we will we'll certainly be closed this Wednesday in honor of Juneteenth. Also, if you haven't filled out a form uh, for our Micah Core team, uh, those are in the basket uh, on the back. We ask that you go ahead and fill that out. That helps our, our core team for Micah as they represent Evergreen um, know what's on the hearts and minds. Uh, of, of an evergreen congregation and what other education, what other pieces of information need to be brought to the congregation to keep everyone uh, in the loop. And then I wanted to say a few words about uh, my parental leave. Um, any day now, uh, CK and I will be uh, welcoming a new life into the world. And um, when that happens, there is this invisible button I'm going to smash that uh, makes me go on parental leave for four weeks. Um, that smash is actually like more of a text to the staff and to Susan as clerk of session to say it's go time. Um, and uh, when that happens, uh, I'll have a, a, an email, um, you know, if you email me, you'll get that response that says, hey, I'm on leave. Uh, reach out to someone else on staff if you have any questions or info at evergreenmemphis.org. Um, our office hours will shift. There'll be a sign on the door. We're not going to do like a big announcement on social media uh, from the church or uh, through a church mail chimp, but um, the staff the next Sunday in worship will say that, hey, it happened and give you an update on it if everyone's healthy, which hopefully is the case and all that. So then I will be gone for four weeks, uh, full four weeks on leave, uh, and then I will come back. CK will take the rest of her leave, which thankfully is 16 weeks, which the messed up part of that is that's the max for Tennessee. There's not a minimum, but there's a max, because people in this state, anyway. Um, so she will take the rest of her leave, and then um, I will then take leave sometime in the fall from my next, uh, I get 12, which is very, very great of the Presbytery to have, but instead of uh, me just doing eight, I'm going to do 10 where I'm working Sundays only. I told this to a colleague last week, and he said, how dare you leave her on Sundays? I said, no, 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 it was her idea. Uh, so I'm working Sundays only to help, that helps the church have some, you know, continuity, and it helps uh, us have, you know, more, uh, two more weeks of during the week that I can be on leave. Session was really wonderful. They approved this plan, but also said, hey, let's check in with you and CK a few weeks into that to make sure that's still working and y'all are okay. So I'm really grateful for the church and the session, and you'll see more of this in writing, but just so you know, uh, once the baby's born, I'm gone for four weeks, then I'm back for a while, and then I'm back just on Sundays. Um, but I'll keep y'all posted to the point where you're probably going to memorize it and not want to hear another word from me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Also, a huge thank you for those who came out in the heat Friday night for Beer and Hymns. It was a blast. Um, huge thank you to Catherine. She put together, as she always does, just a really fun night, and everyone who uh, made it happen. The music was awesome. Um, uh, it, was, it was one of those moments where, like, you're having so much fun, you forget how much sweat has left your body, uh, and that you've not peed in hours because you're just sweating it out. It was a great time, and we raised, um, so far, $220 for Out Memphis, uh, we, uh, money that was collected there in cash, uh, and then we also don't know yet what we raised online, which would be even more, and then we have an anonymous donor that said we will match whatever's raised. So right now, we so far have 220 but uh, I'm sure there's some online that we haven't uh, heard back yet, uh, and that goes straight to Out Memphis and the work that they do. Speaking of music, uh, if you're interested in singing, uh, whether you're in the choir regularly or if you just want to jump on in, there's a pop-up choir. There's info about it in the bulletin to check out, see if it's right for you. Uh, the pop-up choir, uh, their first rehearsal is Wednesday at 6, right here in the space. Um, and then the, the full sharing of, the, uh, of what's been practiced will be on Sunday, uh, June 30th. Um, remind me what that song is from it's Rent? Seasons of Love from Rent. And, seasons then of the, love. and then the choir will be offline until mid-September. All right, choir offline after that, 
until mid-September. Um, and so, yeah, and if, maybe if you just want to, uh, I think as Catherine said, if you're quite curious, this is a good way to test it out with no big commitment. Um, and now I'd like to invite Roger up uh, to, uh, as we bring in the light together. We rise in body and spirit to come and bring in the light together. Oh, holy love who will never abandon us. We celebrate that we are created beautifully in your image. And just as you are the God who is three persons, we are also called to be in the We are the one toe-tapping, hymn-singing, love-making, hand-clapping, joy-sharing, open and affirming body of Christ. One community calls to care for one another. May we continue to grow in your love and life. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, hymn number 
this truth, we are God's beloved, and we are created to live peacefully in the community and friendship with one another. There's nothing we can do and nowhere we can go to be separated from the love of God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Pass the peace to one another. know that we could like see God in everybody and like everywhere? Yeah? Okay. Let's check this out. Okay. Since you just know. Since you just know. Okay. How how can you see God in Patrick? Right there. Uh, oh, you know. Oh, that's a, a tough one. I can help you though. I can help you. Yeah, he's the pastor. He's the pastor. Uh, Pastor? Yeah. That's a good answer. You see God in him because he's the pastor and he's so patient and so loving, right? And then even like Pastor Beatrix over there, she's so loving, she's so patient, right? You can see God in everybody, even your dad, right? Because he's so loving and he's so caring. And so with that, we're supposed to love everybody because some people were made differently from us. Some people look differently from us. Some people came from different places. Like, check this out. Or what does it say? This is what was made in China. Uh-huh. And where is this, this one? Made, made in Mexico, uh-huh. Mexico, and this was made in Vietnam. Right. And so we have to care for all of the people that made those because even though they didn't come, yes, even though they didn't come from where we came from, we love them, right? Because they were made in God's eyes and they were made by God. I want to play a game with you really quickly. Can you hold my microphone? Do you, you're going to promise not to say nothing. Okay, okay. <laughs> And you promise not to let your sister take it? Okay, okay. Okay, I need two volunteers. Come with me. I need two volunteers really quickly. One. Alright, y'all stand up for their volunteer. Come, come, come. And I need one more. One more. One more. Oh, you, you got to stay with her. Okay, it's cool. I just use these two. 
Alright. Alright, so check it out. I'm gonna use you these two. Okay, I'm gonna got you. Now we got three. We got three. We're gonna play a game called Central Command, Miss Sylvia, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what it's for. Actually, I need you to stand inside of the hula hoop. Okay, y'all, y'all can trust. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. If you have, I need you to, y'all, now y'all pay attention as well. If you have curly hair, why do I keep saying that curly hair? If you have curly hair, step out of the circle. Okay. Okay. Everybody step out of the circle. Step out. Okay. If you have shoes with shoelaces, step inside of the circle. Okay. Okay. One foot out. Yeah, one foot in, one foot out. Okay. And remember, this is called a force field. Okay, so if you're in the force field, you're protected. Okay, we're galactic warriors. All right. The force field protects explorers that have blue eyes. If you have blue eyes, step inside of it. Okay. The force field protects explorers who play a musical instrument. You play a musical instrument? Okay. You don't know. You probably may one day. You don't think so? Okay. The force field protects explorers who are wearing black or gray. Do you have on black or gray? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, the force field protects explorers who are wearing a dress or a skirt. Okay. And the force field protects explorers who like broccoli. That's not me because I don't eat broccoli at all. All right. Let's check this out. Y'all step out really quickly. Step out. Now, the force field is not needed because with God's creations, you are all created in God's images. So no matter if you like broccoli, no matter if you have on a skirt, shoes or laces or whatever it is, we are all created by God and we all love each other, right? We love each other the same way that God loves us. Before I go, I want you to tell the people what you told me in the back. You said something about light and darkness and how we need both of them. Can you remember that? Okay, can you tell the people? Remember you said, remember you said that without the darkness there will be no light, and, and so that we, and so that means that we need all of them, both of them, right? Yes, and so we were talking about how um, in the culture we have white, black people, Mexican, and we need all people to come together, and without each other, we would not be anything, so we need each other. All right, y'all, love y'all. Let's go back and finish our play up crafts. All right, come on. Thank you to my volunteers. to God, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute, the harp, and to the melody of the lyra, if you know what that is, and I looked it up, <laughs> it's like an eight-string guitar thing. It's a harp. Yeah, yeah. For you, holy love, have made me glad by your work, at the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Creator! The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of God. They flourish in your courts. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that our God is upright, my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in God. The grass withers and the flowers fall. The word of our God endures forever. Amen. It is my pleasure to welcome Sophie Nealman-Block 
We have worked together since 2019, and she graciously accepted this invitation to come speak this morning. Sophie Nealman Block is an artist, educator, and writer who is passionate about making meaning of the world around her. She began her career at University of California, San Diego, Hillel, in 2015, and has served as the director of Hillel's of Memphis since 2019. Her professional and passion projects are rooted in developing curriculum and immersive educational experiences based in self-reflection and connection to community. Sophie graduated summa cum laude from the University of California, Berkeley, with dual bachelor's of arts degrees in rhetoric and dance and performance studies. She began her artistic journey as a modern dancer and choreographer, directing her own company, The Defiance Project, from 2010 to 2015. Beyond theatrical and live performance, she has explored various artistic media, including creative writing, fashion design, and fiber arts. Regardless of the creative context, she enjoys collaborating with other creators to identify patterns, craft through lines, and extract universal lessons out of personal stories. Please give a warm welcome to our speaker, Sophie Needleman Block. Meaning doesn't happen to us. 
Experiences happen to us. But meaning is something we have to actively, intentionally make for ourselves. Second, community can serve as a tool in our meaning-making process. Community gives us context. It reflects back to us our values. Often, the easiest way to really know ourselves is knowing who we are in relation to others. We can make meaning of who we are by way of what is reflected back to us, further reinforcing that sense of self. Each week, Jews around the world read a designated portion of the Torah, our holy text. Breaking this huge body of work into smaller weekly pieces helps make it more digestible and also enables us to anchor our calendar year in the thematic meaning we make of the parts of the stories in each weekly portion. Vayikach Korach ben Yitzchar ben Kachat ben Levi. That's the opening line from the Torah portion Korach that I read at my bar mitzvah. The Torah portion we read this week is Naso, which means take a census. It's the longest weekly Torah portion where various laws and responsibilities are listed. Moses and Aaron are given a priestly blessing. And the heads of the 12 tribes of Israel bring gifts to the holy tabernacle, or portable earthly dwelling of God, used by the Israelites during the time of the Exodus as offerings. Each member of that community was charged with contributing materials and supplies to build this tabernacle, according to Torah portion Naso. But there are two interesting characteristics of the text that bear meaning in regards to community. The first characteristic is that even though all of the Israelites contributed to the building of the tabernacle, the text begins with, on the day that Moses finished setting up the tabernacle. Moses is given all of the credit for everyone's work. There are times where even within a community, a particular leader stands out or is emphasized over others. This tells us that community exists and thrives not in spite of individual leaders, but often because of them. In true Jewish fashion, the second interesting characteristic completely contradicts the first. <laughs> Just a few verses later, while describing the gifts brought to the tabernacle by the heads of, the, uh, the heads of each of the tribes, the Torah fails to identify Nachshon as the chief of his tribe as he brings the very first gift. Now, normally, we might not think twice about one person out of a huge list of people being left out, but this is especially meaningful that Nachshon, of all of the people, was the one to be left out of the list, because earlier in the book of Exodus, he was the first Israelite to walk into the Red Sea before the waters even parted as the Israelites escaped Pharaoh and their captors. God had given Moses the order to command the Israelites to cross the sea, but no one wanted to be the first to step in. Nachshon recognized the need for someone to step up and go first, and he bravely walked into the sea, which Moses eventually parted, as the rest of the Israelites followed his lead to safety. So why then was Nachshon later omitted from the list of tabernacle gift givers? According to Rabbi Elliot Goldberg, one could say that in dropping his title, the Torah is not slighting Nachshon. Rather, it's honoring him for bringing humility to his position. Perhaps while serving as chieftain of his tribe, Nachshon never held himself above those he represented. And unlike his peers, he did not let the status of his position go to his head. Thus, what appears to be a slight is actually a compliment. Rabbi Goldberg continues, Thinking about this Torah portion, not so, it's hard not to think about the need to speak sensitively, to find ways to praise someone without slighting others, and to honor the contributions of every individual without diminishing those of their peers. Doing so strengthens our ties to one another and helps ensure that God's presence will reside in the sacred spaces that lie in the heart of our own campus. In addition to reading Torah portion Naso this week, there was another big Jewish milestone, the holiday of Shavuot, where we commemorate Moses receiving the Torah from God on Mount Sinai. Unlike many other Jewish holidays, which include rituals based in the home, 
Shavuot is largely observed in the context of a synagogue, in the context of a larger community. Alongside Passover and Sukkot, it's the third pilgrimage holiday each calendar year, marked in ancient times by the gathering of the entire Israelite people at the temple in Jerusalem. Like the others, it's also timed to an important moment in the agricultural calendar, the first grain harvest of the season. Not only is Shavuot a holiday whose meaning is rooted in community, it's reinforced by practices like pilgrimage and harvesting that force us into community, or even heighten community. Interhuman community is just one layer of community for Shavuot, though. Receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai was the moment when, in the Jewish understanding, God's will was expressly communicated to human beings for the first time. It also marks the transition of the ancient Israelites into a religious community, bound by covenant into a mutual relationship with God. In other words, one could argue it's the moment when the Israelites became the Jews because of their communal relationship with God and thus their individual relationship to one another. Torah portion not so, the holiday of Shavuot, counting in a minion so that mourners can pray for their lost loved ones, all teach us that we create ideas worth spreading and lives worth living when we make meaning of our stories, using community as a resource, guidepost, and sounding board. Because meaning leads to understanding, and understanding leads to value. When we make meaning out of our experiences, we can access and share their deeper value with others, further reinforcing community. We can make meaning of our stories by first identifying the core experiences that have shaped us, zooming out and without judgment, noticing patterns, trends, and emotional themes that arise in our experiences. From there, we can connect the dots between the emotional themes present throughout our lives, understanding how these themes lead to and stem from one another, to form the guiding principles that lead us. This self-awareness empowers us to take control over our reactions to what we experience and then create new experiences. It requires us to take authentic ownership over the role our stories play in the principles shaping who we are, as well as the role we play in influencing someone else's story. This all begins with the first step of choosing to believe that everything happens for a reason and then deciding what that reason is for ourselves. Buying into that mindset opens us up to see patterns and purpose in our experiences and our communities that we otherwise wouldn't be able to see. When we make meaning in this way, we can, our, we can express ourselves with intention, articulation, and when we fully express ourselves, we feel understood. When we feel understood, we feel valued, like we count. And feeling valued enables us to see and cherish the inherent value in others. Nothing sums this up better than my favorite quote by David Viscott. The purpose of life is to discover your gift. The work of life is to develop it. The meaning of life is to give your gift. silence. So with whatever is uh, ringing in your heart and your mind, especially after Sophie's words, I invite you to uh, pay attention to how that, uh, how that ringing speaks to you in this silence. I'm going to ring a chime to begin our practice of silence, and then I'll ring it uh, when it's time to close. <laughs>
Giving is not a casual act. It relates God's work to our work. Let us give as people whose work is inextricably linked to God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment. We go to God with our offerings. Just God, for what we are able to offer this community, what we're able to offer this world and one another with our time, our energy, our, our talents, our money, we give you thanks and we pray that you can multiply what we offer to do extraordinary things in this world. In your many names we pray. Amen. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing our doxology, the words printed in your bulletin. Caretakers and parents, thank you for the fathers in our midst and those who have treated us as their own children. You teach us how to be good fathers, parents, and caretakers, cherishing and protecting the children among us. Help us, Father, lovingly, fairly, wisely, and with great joy. Help us raise our children to be the people they are born to be. We need your comfort here today, God of care. For some, today is difficult, and some are parents who do not fit into the gender binary of mother or father. We are grateful that your love is with all of us. For those who, lacking a good model, have worked to become a good father, we thank you. For those holding regret for how they've parented, help them make it right and bring peace. For those who work on their own toxic, internalized ideas of what men or fathers should be, keep, keep them moving graciously and courageously into that important work. We pray especially for those who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. 
and for those who have no children, but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. For those who are about to become fathers, may they openly delight in their children. And for those whose fathers have died, but live on in our memory and in the communion of your saints. Thank you. We pray for those here whose parents have disappointed them. We ask for healing in relationships where there is abuse and violence. We especially ask for justice and reconciliation when fathers have been hurtful. Help Evergreen be a community where people can feel cared for and loved. Finally, we pray today for parents around the world. Parents who cannot feed their children. Parents who are experiencing homelessness or are fleeing a homeland. Those who must teach their children about the dangers of bombs and bullets. Help us create a world where all can raise their children in peace and plenty. We ask in your name, who is a father, parent, mother, caretaker to us all. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit for song number 450, Be Thou My Vision. Thank you. 